Hey everyone, Nathan Nerdark here from Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. There we have a Game Master tip for you. Uh, how do I get my game to feel like dot dot dot? And with me I have... I'm Ted. And I'm Dave. Alright, so we kind of want to explain the not the not like the setting or the theme in general, but we want to say, well, how do I get to that theme yeah, from like, where I'm at? You You have a certain backdrop that you want to be prevalent in your campaign. In the game that you're running, it's overarching. It's always there. You know, it could. You know, it, you, your game could even be revolving around this thing. But how do you make it feel like the thing? And, and instead of breaking down every single uh, genre trope uh, and, and possibility we can think of, we, we're going to pick a couple examples, and we want to talk about the process because if we could get you guys using the process to figure this out. You know, it'll be far more helpful to you than us just spoon feeding you. Well, this is the war backdrop for drop. This is a nautical backdrop, and this is you know a horror backdrop. And the Not mechanisms horror. there will probably be a lot of similarities. Right. Yeah. So we'll start off with war. Okay. So what you what you're trying to do with war or any any of these really is you're trying to evoke certain feelings. You want your players to feel like there's a war going on regardless of what kind of adventures you're running. Right. Like, you could be running a standard D&D campaign with this background, and they may not even be taking part of the war. Right. And now, I, I wouldn't think you'd want to do that, like, <laughs> since you went through the trouble of staging the war. Be a really grimy, grimy war, grim kind of outlook if, on if, life there. If you want to give the players, you know, something else to do until, you know, they've built up enough, you know, clout to be able to go be influential in the war, you could definitely do it. Yeah, or they keep rushing up against this thing that's going on, right. which is the war. So, so how do you make your players actually feel like they're in the, in in this this war backdrop, this war themed campaign, without actually being in the war? Right. Well, every every cliche D and D game starts off with the the players in a tavern. Hmm. So, <laughs> what what is the what is the problem that the tavern is going to have in a war theme? There's refugees. They need a place to sit, so they go there. And and um, you know, or there's just there's just more people. So, you know, so the taverns are overcrowded. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can't get a room because they're all booked out. The prices are through the roof because there's more demand. So oh, there's a shortage of everything. Yeah, the, and yeah. Then they might miss a shipment. They might not get the next shipment of food. So they're actually running out of everything. Right. They they might just be out of stuff. Like you know. I'm at the tavern. I drink wine. Well, you can't get any wine <laughs> because you know because the nation we're at war at, at with is the ones that import the wine, <laughs> uh, you know, or you know, or uh, or a uh, supply caravan that a merchant caravan that was supposed to go through got ransacked by brigands because that's also a side effect of war, oftentimes. So, uh -huh. uh, Ted, you, I feel like we went more specific with talking about the tavern. We want to back out a bit and say, what do the PCs want to feel? You want to when they when they try and do anything in the world they want to feel scarcity they want to feel kind of like an overwhelming of what the the status quo system is so like more people where there's not normally supposed to be people like traffic jam kind of feel to things like there's too many people not out of resources because they're being displaced or they're being run off their land that they were producing food on and they either got burned or got eaten up by the by the the army or, or acquired for the the army. So you have that scarcity feel and mindset. You have that kind of feel and mindset of you don't really know what's going to happen to where you are right now. I you also know. feel like there's two emotions you want to play with, um, predominantly in a, in this kind of a background: fear and anger, mm -hmm. frustration. Yeah. Yeah, you know, fear. so. Yeah, so you're, you you know your characters or the the common people, they're going to be maybe not so much the players, but the common people are, are constantly going to be afraid, be afraid because when war escalates, you know, not modern day war, but like in medieval times, you know, the common people are by far in danger more often. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, crime goes up. You know, there's there's going to be more brigands. There's going to be deserters, and you know, not only that, you have all these men and women who've been trained for war. Right, who who may be deserters now, and if your if your primary skill set is violence, and you're no longer you know employed by the army because you left, well, what are you going to do? Like mm -hmm. you know, um, 
and, and sometimes even like even like a good example is Game of Thrones, where the army basically starts acting like bandits and criminals and, and robbing and stealing from from the common people and taking their stuff. Yeah. You know, so you know, which ties into the you know the scarcity, but also then there's this this fear of is you know that the, any soldier you see or anyone with weapons and armor, you know, are they here to protect you? Or are they here to murder you? Or are they here to rape you? Or are they here to take your stuff? You know, are they so, here on the on the pretense of protecting you, and then they're going to do the former? Th- you know, all yeah. Those so things? like uncertainty. Yeah. You know, so you know, so you definitely like fear, anger, uncertainty, that scarcity uh, mindset. Is, you know, the, the maybe the, there's now tariffs on things that there wasn't before that you know you can't get. Uh, anytime you have war, you know you're going to have famine and plague. Like, so it's going to so diseases are are going to be more more uh, readily available um you know your your places where you'd go for you know even medicinal healing you know they're gonna they're they're gonna be overbooked yeah or, overwhelmed and get worked you know and like you could tie this in by little things like you know all of a sudden now people on the streets they wear white cloths tied around their face you know, mm-hmm. thinking that that'll help stave off plague or sickness mm-hmm. or carry a particular herb or flower with them I think they did that during the black death yeah, yeah. So there's definitely things like that. So, so there's definitely some things you know for that war background that you wanna that you wanna go after. Like so you, and and this is like it doesn't matter what the kind of campaign it is. Like when you pick a certain kind of campaign, you're always really striving to invoke certain kinds of emotions. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's what you have to look at. You know, what are the emotions? What are you trying to make your players feel? And then come up with the thing, right? So we did war. Well, what about like a nautical campaign? Uh, you know, what comes to mind when you think of that? What What is it you're trying to do? For me, I know a lot of people are going to be like, well, the sea, the ocean. But no, it, it's a wonder and exploration. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, you've got yeah. The, the exploration. You've got the open sea. You know, what's 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 under the what's over the next horizon? Um what you know what's on that island you know that that you know unless you're going for a specific type of thing but like that would be a big part of the nautical campaign to me you know the unknown yes but not like n- never so much not not in the scary way of the war where you're like uncertain like what your fate yeah, it's, is it's it's not uncertainty it's it's the you know the the revelation of the unknown yeah yeah like mm-hmm. like like uh, in the one where the one is actually the bad thing, you know, in this, it's the good thing. Like right. that's maybe that's why you do it. Maybe you're so, an explorer. You know, when when you talk about what what emotions, like you know, I would I would say like exhilaration, you know, would be what you're trying to you know coax out of them. Right. So and then like uh, on a on a nautical campaign, you know, if you're doing like extensive um, stints at sea, I would see that I would see the peaks and the valleys being really far apart. Because, like, when you're not finding new cool things on a boat, what are you doing? You're not really doing anything. Right. You're just kind of, like, <laughs> drifting boat, along. on a boat. <laughs> a, yeah, or, you know, you're, you're just looking off into nothingness, you know, for a long time. So, 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 so then, you know, you know, for that particular campaign, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to infuse it with a lot of uh, terminology that would be nautical so that it's going to require more research because Mm -hmm. you know where you could actually run a a war campaign without actually knowing anything about war uh because if unless the players are directly um engaged in the war themselves or interacting with a lot of the soldier npcs and military command like it's not relevant you really yeah if you're not right in it in the thick of things, you're just seeing what floats downstream, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. That's but how close you are. In a nautical campaign, that really much, pretty much implies you're on a boat, right? Yeah. You know, the whole time, and you're exploring, you're going to new places. So, like as as the GM, this one will require a little bit more homework if you're not familiar with that stuff. And and in order to really infuse this campaign, you know, like <clears> we said, you want to invoke wonder and that feeling of exploration, as well as a, as well as those times of absolute boredom. But, you know, in between all of that, you know, I would have a bunch of, like, keywords and keyword phrases and, and research a lot of nautical terms in, in order to keep throwing out through, throughout your sessions in the campaign. 
as well as different things that will happen at sea and kind of to give them that feeling of being at sea. Yes. Yo, um, also with that kind of campaign, um, so one of the hazards or threats that, that's going to pop up a lot will be natural ones. Yeah, you, storms. You, yeah, weather, uh, storms, a crazy water spout. Uh, um, you could do uh, whirlpools. Yeah. You know, there's all kinds of fantastic cool things that are that really you're not going to see anywhere else. Yeah. That uh, you can introduce into your game. Yeah, you you could have some of the more peaceful, you know, water creatures that are swimming by the boat. You know, whatever whatever is going to fit fit the, the the theme or the you know what's going on in your game. You know, be it you know mermaids or dolphins or whatever else and. Yo, know, and other yo know, other ships at sea. That's true. So. So with the nautical campaign, so we're looking at the process and the, me uh, the, uh, the mechanism here of going, okay, well, what makes this feel like an adventure at sea? You know, what, what makes this, can separates this campaign? And then, you know, we, you, just like we do at war, we come up with a checklist, you know. You know, with this, it's going to be more like terminology and, and the DM really knowing uh, these kind of, knowing nautical terms. It's going to be knowing what kind of phenomena they can actually encounter at sea, and you know, and the exploration and, and the feeling of uh, wonder and what's over the next horizon. And within a nautical campaign, there's so many more elements you can actually bring into it. You know, you can do war, piracy. Uh, you know, it could be merchant. You could literally just be an explorer, right. looking for new lands or whatever. You could totally Christopher Columbus this. So. We have one more that we want to cover. <coughs> horror. The horror of it. And uh, I was thinking, you know, I always kind of combine horror and undeath, I think, is, is a good combination personally. I like undeath horror rather than Cthulian horror. Uh, yeah. It's just my but personal it, preference. That's true, but, but there's, other, there's Hitchcock horror. Yeah, but in, in, in either, in all three of those, you have, you have like a general theme base of that kind of, you know, flickering candle, is it going to go out, kind of, like, tension and suspense to it. So I feel like there'd be a large amount of suspense and suspense creating events, uh, similar to we would see in horror stories and, and movies as well, but not, you know, not slasher flicks, but that kind of more psychological horror, like you were saying, Hitchcock, Hitchcock horror. Yeah. So I feel like you'd have elements of... You have to have that kind of, like, suspense, and you really... I would add a level of more lethality to the game or that feeling that you could be the next person dead. So you may have to off a few NPCs here and there, <laughs> you know, to get that, whatever you need to kind of jumpstart that, that feeling of, you know, stuff's real. This is not like getting knocked down and getting back up again. There's a good chance the people that you see at the table are going to be playing new characters someday. <laughs> well, so yeah, so like your the overarching theme in a horror campaign is uh, suspense and tension. Yeah, you want to build, you know, you which you want to build those up uh, as the game goes goes on. And then that culmination in, in the the bringing about of there was a reason why you were feeling that tension and that kind of anxiety is because there is actual terrible things out there. So that kind of reveal of, of the uh, the reason for that build up. So that's I would say that's like the major driving thing behind a horror, a horror event, a horror theme. <clears throat> so I'm just trying to I'm trying to think like so like you know horror it's. I feel like you have a bit of a mystery there because if you knew everything. You wouldn't be in suspense, like well, you know. yeah, that's the the unknown. That, yeah, that's what, you know, you know, really horror is kind of about like the bread, breadcrumbs, you know, leaving the, yeah. the trail of breadcrumbs crumbs for your players to follow, and they, they never quite quite figure out what kind of you know loaf of bread it's coming from <laughs> until it's too late. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, it's so, the zombie loaf. <laughs> the zombie loaf. So you know, a horror campaign is much harder than a horror. You know, stories because it's keeping mm -hmm. it going yeah. for a long time right but so like if, so we what we have to do here now is dissect horror and figure out is there more to it than just have building tension and suspense i mean there's a lot of different techniques for doing that but i don't think that's what we want to do in this video is go because we because we've covered horror before yeah we've mm -hmm. covered horror before uh, we want to identify what makes it a horror campaign yeah i would say that level of suspense that level of kind of mystery unknown uh, but with that real, 
you know, in a mystery game or a mystery unknown thing, it's like, okay, I just don't know something. Well, but there's a detriment to not to that unknown. Well, in the in the nautical game, the mystery was, you know, it was exhilarating because you're looking for it. In the the horror game, the mystery is utterly terrifying because you're afraid of whatever it is. Yeah, you have an overall feel that what's going to happen when you discover if you discover it too late is that people will die because of it or there, yeah. there's going to be a there's going to be an event that that harms you in some way by you not not understanding something fast enough you know, just so just, there's that kind of time limit suspense feel to it like that you're there's this anxiety over completing what what you have before you mm -hmm. similar to what you were saying with the war where people might be you know trying to you know, stave off, you know, plague and famine and whatever have you by, you know, carrying something, um, you know, if we're talking about the undead kind of... Uh, Not necessarily you know, undead, game. but I just mean, I mean, like, horror in general. Because I, I, I would say undead is too specific and okay. more of, like, well, a a device, like, oh, use the undead for this purpose. Right. Sure. Uh, so you've got to, you definitely have to create the, 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 the level of suspense and that's create it through an unknown that is harmful. So, so we have that aspect, but what? So, what are common things that come up in horror-based uh, stories, right? So, you know, there's always, there's always like, uh, there's always mechanisms in the story that seems to want to pull people apart and and cause isolation. Mm -hmm. So, so like, so that that always feels like a part of horror. So, like, I feel like you know, as the as the GM, like, if you're running this kind of game. You, you want to create lots of opportunities to isolate the players from each other through their own choices and through other and through yeah ma mainly choices a lot of times through their own choices you know sometimes you know you'll do the shoots and ladders approach because that you know does happen uh, but you don't want to make that you know your go to it's better if you if they do it on their own right yeah um so I feel like you know for the horror so tension suspense suspension um, you know isolation is a really good way to, to do that you know you mm -hmm. want to you want to tackle psychological triggers so i feel like those so so i feel like the at the core of a good horror game is psychological triggers okay um and, and that's going to define that kind of game you're playing and you constantly so you want to constantly kind of uh spread them throughout your game that that's the me i believe that i believe in this case that's the mechanism okay, okay. you know um Horror is a, is a little tougher because it's broad because you can actually do horror on top of anything else. Right. Yeah. You know, you know, other than just itself, you know, and the, the part that makes it horrible horror is the horrible things that happen, you know, both on and off camera. Right. Yeah, that that cost of of not not achieving what you need to do, you know, so. Uh, I was thinking one of the things is like timed mechanisms in a way, not like a physical mechanism, but the idea of like, oh, we need to get out of this dungeon before it fills up with water, but we need to find an exit. So we're going to split up to make the search faster. And right. then, you know, so, so they, they're going to willingly choose that kind of option. So that's, oh, you of... know, that, that brings another point, you know, another thing that kind of defines horror in my opinion is, um, it's a surviving game. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a game about survivability, more so than killing the monster or saving the princess. You know, so that that's the overarching you know theme in, in the horror campaign is going to be, you know, the they survivor. Get out alive. Yeah, the get out alive, the survivor. You know, as you, so so you, that's one of the things that you're trying to instill too. Where, like you said, you know, you're racing against the clock. You know, doing all these things to build tension and suspense because, you know, if you if you don't do the thing, you're not going to be able to survive. You mm -hmm. know, or the thing doing the thing is actually the surviving. So you know, maybe it's you know, like you they just have to last until dawn, in in the haunted house to get out alive. You know, and the doors unlock or whatever. Um, I think we actually picked a tough one with horror. Oh yeah, it's yeah hard you know, to compared to the war and the nautical, but the idea, guys, is for you guys to look at what kind of campaign you're trying to run, and you have to ask these kind of questions like, what makes it that thing? What is going to make my players go, oh, this is a war campaign? This, is, yeah, I feel like my characters are, are in this war torn country, or, 
you know, I, you know, I feel like, um, you know, I feel like this is a, a there. This is a horror game because because their genuine their characters are genuinely genuinely scared all the time. You have you have yeah. zombies you have... fighting zombies doesn't make a horror game. No. You know, like that's kind of not going to be the way to go with that. I mean, you could fight zombies as part of the horror theme, but they're not going to be what makes it horror. You know, I, I think what you know typically fifth edition gears people to kind of have that that town life. Uh, as as part of your you know your backdrop, so you have to to look at what is your day to day situation for the average person in this in this backdrop, and how is this backdrop affecting that person that you know your players are going to be able to interact with. For instance, right? What if your can What if you decide to do a frontier campaign? Well, what's the big problem with a frontier campaign? You don't have access to anything. Mm -hmm. Like you guys have whatever you brought with you, you yeah, know. Yeah, whatever you brought, whatever you can make. E you know, even if it's you know, even if you're along the lines of you know, you're not alone like the adventuring party, but you're part of this this these settlers. You know, it's you against the wilderness. You know, again, again, you have the exploration thing going on. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, now you have a, a scarcity of resources for a different reason. Yeah. Maybe there's raw raw resources. Industrialize, you know, create it. You know, me metal objects and other things would be would be rare. Yes. While or you have to travel, you know. You could probably shoot a deer a day for for months. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, so again, like, you know, this video is about looking at the different backdrops you want to ran, run your campaign in whether it, whether it's war politics horror you know a, a frontier settlement um i don't know i'm sure there, there's tons of there's tons of other ones they're just the ones off the top of my head mm -hmm, that i yeah. can think of but you you have to look at that thing and go what what makes it that you know what what's different between this campaign and just running a generic D, &D campaign and then once you start defining those elements, you can then insert them into the game. Yeah, and I would say always add monsters last. Yeah, like, whatever. Order. Like if you think, oh, like I want to do a horror game and I want to say they're going to fight these things. It's like, well, start with the theme of the horror and how that, the, how that changes that area of the world or of the frontier land. Like you might say, oh, well, I'm going to have them fight orcs. Well, you know, develop where they start. And more than what they're going to end up fighting, you know. That's what I would say. Like to get that theme down and solidify it. That's why I would start with the theme and then add the monsters last after everything. So, what are some other themes we can think of off the top of our heads? Well, when we talked about you know uh, high magic, uh, you could talk about you know lo low magic, you know, or, or you know non-existent magic. Um, you could technically have, uh, you know, if you want to branch outside of, of D and D, you could have a post-apocalyptic. Um, well, I mean, you don't really have to branch outside of D and D. I mean, really, that just says the the civilization has fallen. That's true. <laughs> Dark yeah. Sun yeah. is post-apocalyptic. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. Count how much water you have on you. <laughs> yeah. So and, you know, and then you know, cream. right, yeah. and so then it just goes back once you find your theme. Uh, you know, cause, and we're doing this video because we've gotten asked like different questions along this line. You know, how do you do X campaign or how do you do Y campaign? Well, instead of doing X or Y, we just figured we'd just do a broad generic of going, hey, here are some tools in your DM toolbox that you can use no matter what kind of campaign you want to run. You know, mm -hmm. really, it just it comes back to asking questions and going. And there's so much media out there for whatever kind of campaign you probably want to run. There's there's books and movies and comic books on that subject that you can go that you can go and watch and do some research and go well what makes me you know what makes that feel like this yeah and try and put yourself in the place of some of the characters the, the characters dealing with that I mean like well what kind of what what would I be thinking what would be running through my mind and what, what would I be feeling hardships? yeah what are the hardships what are some of the benefits or ease of living in that scenario and that can kind of that can start off well this is what I want my players to feel. Well, exactly. Like so, like that's a great place to start. Like a pros and cons list of being in that place at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, and then from there you can can refine it even even more so. Well, you can take a look at that pros and cons list and go, well, how would that make me feel, right? So, 
you know, and you would do that because then when you come when you come off that overarching, you know, emotional state for the people of that place, you can then go, well, how will how will I insert that into my game to make my players feel that thing? And then so so I mean that's kind of that like if you if you have an idea for a campaign and you have no idea where to go with it, you know, again, you know, see, search out media. And then go, and then do a pros and cons list of, you know, having to go through that, those times and be in that place. It might be all cons. It might be all pros. You know, depending on what kind of what, what kind of thing you're doing. Usually, it's going to be both. But then, once you identify them, you can then you can then like uh, just chunk down from there and just break them down. Um, so I guess a, a good example would be like, so if you're doing war. Like the con is like the scarcity we talked uh-huh. about, mm-hmm. and from scarcity you can go, we can chunk that down even further. Going, well, well, what exactly would be scarce? Scarce, and, and and what are the effects of that? Well, there's not as much food, there's not as much booze, there's not as much uh, weapon because it's being it's all been taken for the army. Uh-huh. So what what does this mean? Well, what there is is going to be more expensive. Uh-huh. Uh, scarcity, another thing, like, okay, uh, less places to live because places, places are being destroyed and raised. So mm-hmm. what does that mean? It means more people, less space. Um, and then you might go cons. Well, what what is the con? Well, I guess you can profit during times of war as well if you if you if you have something to sell to one side or to the other or both. Oh, yeah, so the pro, you know, if you're a merchant, you're going to be making some money if you've, got, if you've got the goods or access to them. Or, you know, or if you're a bandit. Yeah, you know, you're a brigand. Like, there's more opportunities to to uh, to steal and plunder because you know uh, there's a war going on. They have other things to worry about other than policing the communities. Right. So that's a pro for the pl- for the DM and the players. They'll always be able to go fight some bandits. They'll be readily available. Well, yeah. So like, <laughs> but but the point is, from you you just take these basic concepts and uh, you can start breaking them down, and they branch out. And, you know, and from from those, you've, you've got all these things. Well, you know, well, now these things have to be in the game in order for the people to feel like it's that thing. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I think I think that pretty much covers it. Yeah. What do you guys think? You can put your uh, suggestions in the comments below. While you're at it, you can click like, share, and subscribe. You can uh, follow us on Twitter. And you can... Go to uh, nerdarchy.com and check out Nerdarchy the store. So until next time, stay Stay nerdy. nerdy.